So I'll have uh, some questions while this is going. Uh, I'll be drawing, but I'll try to answer the questions as best as I can. Uh, yeah, so I mean, let, let's start with a, a kind of simple one, which is, uh, how did you actually get started working on Cowboy Beat? Gundam animes um, with uh, Minami producer or producer Minami on the Gundam 0083 uh, series and so I also worked with the director Shinjiro Watanabe and um, you know together we thought about creating our own original animes um, instead of doing adaptations and so they brought me on um, as a character designer and we decided to uh, team up to make Cowboy Bebop. So you started as an animator before you were a character designer, right? Which is pretty common. So how did you make that uh, that transition from animator to character designer? Uh, Battlefront, uh, Tensai Okamura on Wolf Screen. 
So uh, how would you kind of compare working with these different directors and their styles? I hear that uh, from a lot of a lot of animators and staff. Is that yeah, some of the best directors have some of the most uh, outlandish requests for their staff. So since we've got Spike Spiegel up here, I've got a question about him. Uh, I think it's pretty well known that he's at least in part based on, uh, or inspired by Loop on the Third. Uh, so how much of that came from Mr. Watanabe, or from you, or from other members of the staff? watched a lot of the same kind of movies, TV shows, dramas, um, all kinds of medias from, you know, the same uh, time period. And so based on, you know, our own hobbies and likes, uh, you know, it just kind of came to an unspoken agreement that we would uh, take Rupan third and, um, you know, base Spike off of him. So, uh, I don't think he's shown up on this, uh, on this piece of art yet, but I, I do have a question about Ayn. Uh, so I've heard a story uh, that Ayn is based on your friend's corgi. Uh, 
I was wondering if you can tell that story for the audience here. actually comes from the scenario writer, um, uh, Ms. Nobumoto. And so she was the one who insisted that, you know, the corgi has to be in the anime. And so that's that's the reason why. Um, so I tried several times to uh, practice drawing corgis, but it, it didn't really work out very well because uh, corgis are very um, uniquely built, you know, with their um, strange body shape and having a very small tail. So in order to uh, nail down the design of corgis and to better draw corgis in general, um, I knew that a friend of mine uh, owns a corgi, so I often tried to like, do um, practice by um, looking at my friend's corgi and trying to get the the feel of how the corgi is drawn. And so in order to better understand how a corgi runs and how they move and to get a better understanding of how to draw them uh, accurately, um, you know, I studied real corgis for my friend and then after you know, practicing drawing corgis so much, I decided, well, I better buy a corgi. So he got a corgi himself. So even though I originally based the design off of Ein um, from my friend's corgi, who's an adult dog, um, you know, later on, as you go through the, uh, the episode, it started to become more and more influenced by my own corgi puppy. So it almost kind of seems like the that I like kind of becomes younger through the influence of my own dog. Uh, what did you name your corgi? <laughs> Uh, so I named my corgi Colin uh, or Cody, but um, you know after talking with a friend, he found out that Colin or Cody is actually a, a male name um, in Western cultures. But you know, Cody, his dog is actually a girl. Um, so like the story behind that is that you know. Ko is usually used in Japanese names for girls because it means child. And then Ling is just like a cute little suffix to add to the end of names. So that's how Koring came up. I think there's a lot of people, uh, I think I know people in, in the US who have corgis that they named Ein. So. Like 
ちらかから出して作品の影響を受けてくれるっていうのは、本当に自分たちにとって光栄なこと。So he's really happy to hear that、um, you know, people are influenced and affected by his animations and will name their dogs after their characters. Uh, I now sense this, but、uh, I feel a little bit sad and like.、Uh, I hope you guys aren't disappointed that I can't talk to you guys directly while looking at you. I, I have to focus looking down, and so I, I, I'm sorry about that. Well, we have a panel later today at 3 o'clock where、uh, you won't be drawing and you can talk directly to the audience. Oh, yes. So there will be a chance for me to talk to you guys directly without me looking down. And focus directly on、uh, looking at you guys.、Uh, you mentioned before that you haven't drawn these characters in a while. When, like,、uh, when's the last time that you've done an official cover of Bebop art? Is it that there was some art for like a cafe in Japan? For the Cowboy Bebop themed cafe in Japan.、Um, so during that time, I did、uh, create some illustrations for the cafe, but actually, since then, because of the 20 year anniversary, I have recently done some more illustrations for Cowboy Bebop.、Um, and so, you know, because of that, it actually hasn't been too long. I just want to let the audience know that in the 20th anniversary of the cafe illustrations,、uh, mine was a bow tie. It's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so I was very happy to hear that I look so cute. <laughs> <laughs> So, for those illustrations,、um, I was able to draw a composition of my own choosing. So, it was nice to have that kind of freedom and be able to do something that、um, expresses、um, how I want the characters to look.、Uh, in terms of Your character design process. Do you ever base your designs off of real people, like celebrities or people you know, or things like that? Uh, like with you know, me and、uh, Watanabe, uh, 
being from the same generation, we watch a lot of the same stuff. Um, so like we mentioned with, um, with Spike being based off of Lupin, um, we also watched a show called Tante Monogatari, and so we based a lot of the designs off of um, people from the show. And to Sumitani, how do we get up to so for Cowboy Bebop, um, you know, if the director tells me like, oh, you know, I want this person to kind of look like this other person, like this celebrity, or, um, you know, I want them to be based off of this person, then I take that into consideration and try to incorporate that into the character design. So a lot of my character designs tend to be based off of um, things that me and the, and the director or producer um, appreciate throughout you know, all the different movies or the different medias that we consume. Um, so there's, um, there might be some like inspiration from like Bruce Lee or some other movies. Um, so we tend to base the character's design off of what we like um, and what we enjoy. Um, not to say that we try to copy them, but kind of a pay an homage to these different characters and entities. Speaking of that, uh, I know when, when you were growing up you were a fan of a lot of anime, so what were some of your favorite uh, anime and manga characters when you were growing up? Um, so I'm, I'm not really fond of trying to pick only one thing that I can say is like my favorite. I don't really like picking, picking favorites in general. Um, so, you know, when I was young, I watched a lot of um, different kinds of medias, whether it was live action or anime or reading manga. Um, I took all of that into my mind and, you know, since I was a student um, in elementary school, you know, I, I, watched enjoy I watched series like Spaceship Yamato or Mobile Suit Gundam or um, works by Matsumoto Reiji. So, you know, I, I enjoyed all of these works and it's really hard for me to pick a favorite. So uh, yeah, you mentioned, uh, or you've, you've definitely been like a really big fan of uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, and you got to work on a lot of Gundam uh, as an adult. So what was that like, kind of getting to be a part of that? Yeah, well, um, so Gundam. 
de la vie 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 de So I got to um, work with um, some you know, legendary uh, animators or artists like um, a character designer named Yoshikawa and I was feeling very um, uneasy and anxious about you know, working for such an important person because I respected them so much that I was just very nervous about um, working on that name. So even though I was very, um, um, very not confident in myself and I had a lot of worries and concerns, um, I feel like all the different experiences that I had um, you know, working on Gundam and you know, working on such a respected project um, had a big impact on me and I think it was a really positive experience. I'm asking a lot of questions about your character design work, but you're also an animator. Uh, so, what's your sort of process uh, when animating? What kind of references do you, do you use, things like that? Um, so as long as um, I'm given, you know, an ample amount of information about um, the character or the environment, um, you know, that's all I really need in terms of the animation process. Um, and so then, um, you know, we, we don't really have the time to work on, you know, trying to do character development too much like in the animation process. So we just gotta just gotta do it. It's gotta go fast uh, and we just gotta draw very quickly. Would you say there's any other uh, like you've talked about some of the character designers and shows that influenced you, but how about like specific anime books that uh, had a big influence on you? So like I mentioned before, um, the character designer from Gundam, um, Yoshikawa, was a big influence on me. But to, you know, to pick only certain animators um, that were a big impact on me is really difficult. Um, you know, because, you know, everyone works hard and everyone works together. It's like we're nearing the end here. <laughs> so I'm realizing the difficulties of working within a tight schedule. Uh, so yeah, I might be able to fit uh, another question or two in here before we wrap up. Uh, so you worked on a few series that became uh, really popular here in the U.S., especially Cowboy Bebop. Uh, but 
weren't necessarily uh, maybe as uh, as popular in, in uh, Japan. So, do you think about that audience outside Japan when you're designing characters these days? And like, how, does that influence uh, how you're designing things? Bob, we didn't really think about the international audience, and we didn't take it much into consideration in order to uh, make the character designs. But in terms of now, um, it really is up to the director and what the director is envisioning in order to achieve uh, the character design. Um, so even now, um, you know, even though uh, you know I am a character designer, uh, it's really up to the director and what the director is wanting to express. Uh, I think we're done with this uh, live drawing here, so thank you so much. This is amazing. You fit them all in. The whole crew. Alright, so, so we are going to have, we're going to do some John Ken Bone here. Yeah? Scrum Night, though. No. Uh, I did the best I could with the time I had. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs>